Several subscribers have asked whether binaurals and isochronics work after being subjugated to YouTube's audio compression. Good question, but answering it is akin to a Zen koan. Not because it's spiritually insightful in any way, but because it's kinda like stating the obvious in a very roundabout way. There are two phases involved when encoding a track for YouTube. First, there's the initial rendering process where the video file is compressed down to a size that won't take days to upload. During this stage, the audio remains uncompressed, leaving this task to YouTube's automated encoding process. YouTube transcodes uploaded content in order to make it suitable for streaming and readily available to a wide audience on devices such as mobile phones, tablets, notebooks and PCs. Encoders work to reduce file size by removing certain frequency content. But how is it determined which frequency content is removed? The range of human hearing is approximately between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. When listening to CD quality audio or uncompressed FLAC files, not all frequencies are perceivable to the human ear, particularly those on extreme ends of the spectrum. Through compression, we can take these frequencies away, as well as others which fall between the amplitude threshold, and the difference will hardly be noticeable for the most part, unless we use ultra-low quality settings or poor converters. Let's try an experiment. We'll begin by rendering a binaural beat from Audacity in both WAV and MP3 format. Then, we'll upload both audios to the YouTube service for a before and after comparison of the frequency content. Before YouTube conversion. Below is a spectral analysis of the binaurals before being run through YouTube's audio compression. You can clearly see an aggregate of the two sine waves, 200 and 210 hertz, represented in each graph after YouTube conversion. So now that the audios have been uploaded to YouTube servers, are there any significant changes in the frequency response? Nope. The fundamental frequencies of 200 and 210 Hertz are still intact, even in the already compressed MP3. You see, with pure sine waves, we are dealing with very basic forms of audio. Specifically, the fundamental frequencies, which provide a bass tone for more complex waveforms, such as those found in musical instruments. For example, with a guitar, it is the addition of harmonics and overtones which give it its signature sound. When plucking a C note, not only do you have the fundamental tone of 130.81 Hz, but many harmonic overtones accompany it in order to create the guitar sound we're familiar with including 261.63 Hz, 392.43, etc. The sine waves that make up binaural beats consist of only fundamental bass frequencies, with no harmonic overtones. So why do you need to know all this? When administering data compression to binaurals and isochronics, you don't have to worry about the preservation of complex frequency content for their effects to be felt, because there aren't any. You would have to run a track repeatedly through poor quality converters at stupidly low bit sample rates to render the final result an indistinguishable mangled mess littered with artifacts. With YouTube, a little, almost imperceptible loss in musical fidelity is a small price to pay for faster streaming, and in the case of the MP3s in our web store, smaller downloads. This means much more storage space for all your favourite tracks. When uploading to YouTube, musical fidelity is preserved as much as possible anyway by exporting uncompressed WAVs during phase one of the video render process. As for the entrainment tones, they will survive anything but the most extreme settings of low quality converters. You'd have to really work to render them useless. Combining music with entrainment tones. The main thing that stands in the way of an effective entrainment session isn't compression, but the proper mixing of pure sine waves with the masking component. In most cases, this is music, though it can also come in the form of white noise or field recordings. When mixing pure sine waves with music, there exists a clashing of frequencies where the basic fundamental tones are drowned out by the harmonic content of the musical backdrop. 
A musical mix consists of an interaction of a slew of harmonic frequency content. As you can imagine, a frequency following response is difficult when the basic sine tones are competing with other, more dominant frequencies. This is the sum of all the instruments combined. If we overlay the blueprint of our poor little sine wave, you can see how it gets drowned out by the music. It's for this reason we've perfected various advanced production techniques over the years, where your ears can clearly distinguish between the music and entrainment tones. Therefore, you can be sure that what you're experiencing is genuine brainwave entrainment audio and not just simply mass-produced background music. In conclusion, data compression is nothing to be concerned about due to the simplicity of the fundamental carrier tones. Musical content will experience minor, almost imperceptible degradation in fidelity due to its wider harmonic content, but brainwave entrainment efficacy will not be compromised unless silly levels of data compression are applied or the two elements are not mixed properly. Are you still with us? Great. Well done for sticking this out, young Padawan. You are now all the more wiser for your studious attention and eagerness to learn.